Well, hello, everybody around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my kitchen. This is the In the Kitchen with the Plant-Based Nutritionista podcast. And in this episode, we are going to talk about the power of meal prep. Y'all know I've been excited about this podcast, and this is just one of many episodes to come where we talk about the power of meal prep. First and foremost, we are three days shy of the end of February, at the end of February 2023. And so I hope everyone is off to a good start this new year. If you have not gotten started or you have fallen off with your goals or priorities that you set, that's okay. You still have now. So go ahead and get started one foot in front of the other. Let's not fret over January's 31 days or up to today, which is February the 25th. That's okay. You still got now. Keep it moving. Speaking of Keep It Moving, if you have not joined the Keep It Moving Challenge, it runs through April the 9th. All the details are in my bio. You can go to my Instagram page, I Eat More Plants, or you can go to the Instagram page, The Plant Based Nutritionista. All the details are there. Sign up for Team I Eat More Plants. Our goal is 1 million steps by April the 9th. And while you're there, go ahead, like, follow, and subscribe to help our content rise to the top. We want to help as many people as possible with this community in health that we are creating through this podcast. Meal prep is not only simple, it is one of the best things you can do for your body, your health, your mind, your emotions, your family, your children, and your wallet. And here's what we know that cooking at home has declined uh, over over the, the latter part of the 20th century for all Americans across all socioeconomic groups. But here's what stands out uh, and what we see that is consistent in its decline is that what we are calling low-income households are, are, have been consistently not cooking at home for at least the last two decades. We know that when families cook at home more than five times per week, they are more likely to consume fruits and vegetables than families that cook at home and eat there three times or less per week. But here's the caveat. Just because a family cooks at home doesn't mean the food quality favors nutrient density. And what that means is it doesn't mean that the food is necessarily healthy, that it's it's fueling uh, health for their body. So it's not enough to know what to do. We have to actually put that in to action. Parents, I want to talk to you for just a minute. Parents and caregivers, we have such an awesome opportunity. Why? Because we control the availability of food in our house, in our homes. Now, either the physical environment in our home is going to favor or facilitate healthy eating and and healthy outcomes for our children and the adults in our home, or it's going to inhibit and promote unhealthy outcomes. We decide. Our children are more inclined to not only participate in meal prep at home, especially when we invite them in, but when we do, it also helps them to make healthy choices about food and meal prep outside the home. And when they go off to college and when they start their own families. So I'll put a plug in here, parents. We are not raising children. We are raising little adults. Keep that in mind. Parents who consistently create an environment that provides convenience foods, which are high calorie and and low nutrient, are gonna have a bit of a struggle with this transition of meal prep. Because the more that environment supports convenience foods, especially those convenience foods that are high calorie and low nutrients, you're gonna have less of a chance to get that acceptance from your child and the adults in your home that you're supporting with food and they're gonna have less of a preference for healthy foods. So parents who consistently provide convenience foods that are high calorie and low nutrients will have less of a chance to build acceptance and preferences for healthy foods with their children themselves and any other adults in their home that they're preparing meals for. So what is meal prep? Simply put, meal prep is planning, shopping, and preparing the meals at home in advance that you're gonna eat later. Why is it important? Meal prep saves time. Meal prep saves money. And not only does it do it at each meal, it's throughout the week. There's nothing more gratifying 
than to be under pressure for a deadline or to come home and know that dinner is already ready or to wake up in the morning and know that breakfast is, has already been thought about and all I got to do is either heat it up or take it out or whatever it is. If it's a smoothie, if, if I've already per batch prepared that, then I'm just shaking it up and I'm eating it and I'm out drinking it and I'm out the door. Meal prep allows you to control the ingredients in your food. And this is where nutritional knowledge and things like that comes in. But I hope this podcast, it is my hope and prayer that this podcast begins to help teach some of these things to inspire you to do meal prep and to eat more at home. But you get to control the ingredients in your food. And guess what? Two things come out of that. When you're controlling the ingredients, you get to now maximize the nutrient density and profile at each meal. You also get to control any concerns <laughs> and minimize those concerns anyway for food allergies, which is really big in my home. And guess what else happens when you meal prep more often? You minimize your environmental footprint, which is a podcast for another time. So the number one way to control health to control your health, to control your children's health or your little adults and the adults in your home that you're preparing meals for, the number one way to control health, here it is, hear me, control what goes into the garden of your body, which means you get to control the root cause of nearly 90% of all preventable diseases. Just look at the top 10 lists Google top 10 <laughs> causes of death in the United States and globally. The U.S. says behaviors and patterns influences the world. And so in many ways, we are responsible for the shift in, in poorer health outcomes around the world. The number one way to control health, I'm going to say it again, is to control what goes into the garden of your body. And when you do that, you control the root cause of nearly 90% is what I'm saying, <laughs> of all disease, especially preventable diseases. There are some perceived barriers to meal prep that I want to dispel, and some of this might actually upset you all, and that's not the intent, but if it upsets you, I want you to sit in that for a moment and ask yourself why. I want you to lean into that and ask, why, why do I feel this way when she said this or when she said that? Ask yourself those questions and feel free to DM me if you have some more questions. Number one thing I hear all the time from, from, from many people that I meet across the world is time. I don't have time. I don't have time. But when I sit and talk with people and map their day out, I realize there's time. Usually the issue is priority and time management and what you value. Okay? So if you don't meal prep right now, it's because you don't value it. Your calendar and how you spend your time tells me what your values are. And if your health is important to you and you want to meal prep, there is an opportunity here to reevaluate how you spend your time. The second is not knowing or understanding your why for meal prep. So I could just say, yeah, let's meal prep, everybody meal prep and cook at home and all that, but why, right, why? So ask yourself, why? Why is meal prep important? Why would that be a benefit to me? Why would meal prep be something I want to do? And then that goes into the next part, which is knowledge and importance of nutrition. For some, we don't even know why it's important to eat certain fruits and vegetables and to eat foods in combination. But when you know those things, oh, does the joy and the love return in the kitchen? Because you're excited to know that you can eat raw carrots all day and you're going to get some nutritional benefit from that. But did you know when you cook them, when you steam them, you unpack some things that weren't necessarily available when they were raw? Oh, yeah. And that goes for lots of different types of fruits and vegetables. Because we cook certain fruits like tomatoes. That's another one. You can eat them raw all day. But that's fast soluble. Go ahead and roast it. And eat it with some avocado or, 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 or some beans or legumes or something like that to get all the vitamins out. Not just the water-soluble ones, but the fat-soluble ones too. And this next one is number four, and I'm going to combine it, is cooking skills with confidence in self. But for some, I'll just say of us, some of us humans, we have not been taught to cook. That's a barrier. 
I hope I can help with that through this podcast and through some of the demos that we're offering throughout the year. And for others, it's that confidence in self. Are they going to like my food? The dreaded, oh my God, <laughs> walk to the kitchen. What I could tell people is the time it takes, and this is how I think about it, to figure out what I want to eat. And now we got Uber Eats before we had to call the restaurant and wait for them to deliver. And we didn't know what time our food was coming, even though they said it was coming. Now we can track our food. The time you do all of that, you could have prepared a meal, sat down and ate it, be cleaning up before they're knocking on your door. And that just comes with knowing what to do, knowing how to prepare foods. And then there's a controversial phrase I'm going to mention. I'm going to let it sink in. I'm not going to talk much about it because we're going to do a whole podcast on it. Food addiction. Food addiction. And if you think you don't have one, take your favorite food and say, and find out it's no longer available in the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Take your favorite meat dish and let a doctor tell you you can't have any more and see how you respond to that. Right? And I'm just really oversimplifying this whole controversial topic of food addiction. But just to give you some perceived barriers to meal prep, that one was important to mention. So I have this meal prep triangle that I like to use, and I'm going to give you a visual of this as we wrap up our time together today. It's called the I Eat More Plants Meal Prep Triangle. At the top of the triangle is nutritional knowledge which is knowing the importance of healthy eating and quality ingredients, nutritional knowledge. At the bottom left, you have the physical environment of food availability and preparation. And that physical environment, remember, is either gonna support or inhibit not only meal prep, but healthy outcomes. And then number three is taking action. And when we put these three things together, we are able to not only meal prep, but control the food we eat, enjoy our food, and begin taking our health back one meal at a time by eating more plants. And so hear me, I am not saying that you need to stop today and start meal prepping for five and six, seven days a week. That may not be feasible because we're talking about behavior modification here and change management. So maybe it's just one or two days a week you meal prep. Maybe it's just one meal that you focus on throughout the week. Maybe you start on the weekend and, and meal prep for one day. And this is what I say. I think we all know how to meal prep because we do it for Thanksgiving, Christmas, Mother's Day, uh, resurrection, holiday season. We meal prep because we have big meals. So this isn't the issue of knowing how to meal prep. It's just doing it on a, a more regular basis basis and I'm confident that you can do it so I like to tell people pick your day to go shopping only know what you're shopping for what meals you're going to prepare for that week and then go home and listen I'll have on a, a video or some music or a seminar or a podcast or something going while I'm cleaning and cooking and meal prepping and chopping and getting everything ready for the week and that might be a whole day and then I'll have the evening to myself or vice versa, or I split it up and I do it across two days. But for me, the weekend works to meal prep. You have to just know what works for you and then use that time to start meal prepping and break it up. And if you have children in your home and other adults in your home, invite them into the process and it goes a lot faster. So I'm excited to begin this meal prep podcast series with you. I have more information to come, but I know that you can take your health back one meal at a time by eating more plants. All it takes is just a little bit of effort, a little bit of cheering for me on the sidelines, and the knowledge I'm beginning to share and you to take some action. You can do it. I'm confident I know you can. Thanks for joining In the Kitchen with the Plant-Based Nutritionista podcast.